Caribbean insight, really is dynamite. Caribbean insight, really super. Was spite. Caribbean insight, enjoy day or night. Caribbean insight, really is dynamite. Hello and welcome to another edition of Caribbean Insight. The program that keeps you in touch with your Caribbean culture and its history. And tonight, we have a big, big, big one for you guys. A brother who made his debut at the big stage in TNT in the year 1987. And he did this 15 times. A child of the review whose Calypso career encompasses social and political commentaries. Party songs, Calypsos of spiritual and moral upliftment. His consistency in the Calypso art form, together with his hard-hitting tongue-whipping lyrics, has earned him his place. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's get ready to welcome the Calypso Monarch of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago for the year 2002. My friend and your lover, you know him as Sugar Allos, Mr. Michael Asuna. Mike, welcome to the show, man. Well, thank you, thank you, V, thank you. Yes, listen, the first time you were here, you was only a finalist. All the time. All the time, and yeah, you stay in the like, finals. Like, like I was sticking. <laughs> <laughs> like it was the I was the king. But now you're back as a king. You have the crown. You earned the title. How does it feel? Uh, it doesn't feel like how first I began, I knew I was born a king. All right. The name of Suna uh -huh. is Nigerian. Okay. You understand? Uh -huh. I was born a king. Mm. And when they hand me the thing in 2000, they did owe me that. Me win nothing. They owe me that. 1990 pressure right uh -huh. they changed the results 48 hours after me 1992 they bring sparrow to upset the thing 1998 they lick off my head with prowler 1999 flawless performance sandra had four false start they lick off my head with sandra <laughs> so they owe me I mean, Vic, Kong, you don't count it now. Yeah, I count it. Right, they owe me, they owe me. They owe you. They owe me. But they finally pay you. They, they, they pay me. They pay you. Their interest, the capital is coming yet? The no, capital is no, coming No, they're coming yet. So it's on its way? Yeah, it could be on its way. It's on its way. And uh -huh. if you want to talk about wickedness again, 2003 sabotage with Mike, Mike Breakdown, background vocal Mike Breakdown, my Mike Breakdown, the band, the whole band Breakdown, the whole song system Breakdown, and in the middle of the second verse and chorus, uh -huh. two people run on stage and hand me a new mic and tell me start over. Wickedness to the bone. So in the ending of that now, they say we go ease him up, we go put him last. Because it's not he fall the system breakdown, we go put him seventh. Heather McIntosh beat me, girl. All kind of Lord Joking board and Mighty Fix can beat me up this year. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, hey, I like that. I like how you say that. Okay. It's only happening one place on Caribbean inside. I wonder why, boy. Why, why after all these years, you you work, you, you did hard work. You've been consistent. Yeah, but you see, the vultures didn't consider that, you know. They didn't consider that hard work, you know. They're not considering this consistency, the 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 always there. Right. They're not looking at that. They're telling themselves, "I is a thorn in the side." But they're stupid because the best of rose must have a thorn. So if they want to look good, they must have me there. Of course. And they're not thinking that, so it's pressure, but what? That is bus pipe, that don't move, man. <laughs> I like how you say that. Yeah. But regardless of the pressure, they had no other choice but to give it up. No, they had no choice, they had no choice because, you know, that one come, what, girl? That one come out from the Balize patch itself, you know? That 2002? Yeah. Yeah, girl. I gone in the market. 
Christmas morning. This song ain't bad, eh? Oh, you know that song we like it? It's only you could tell it like but that. But it's only woman that make man do them stupidness. <laughs> We go in the grocery, we go in the market, we do everything over the holidays. I say, well, I go relax. Uh -huh. Christmas morning, I'm looking for a nice little tree, mm -hmm. table, um, bed tree, mm -hmm. to get some breakfast, breakfast in, bed in bed because I've been so nice to you all these years. All right, all right. I know, another year again, I've been nice to you again. I'm looking for a little bed tree. Mike, you know what? I didn't pick up and I said, I would wait till this morning. Some lettuce and some big slicing tomato. Go for it for a minute. Oh, so God, not even mm, happy Christmas. <laughs> so I jump in the car uh -huh. and I go on down the road. I have nothing in my head. Up until the 25th of December 2001, I have nothing in my head. All I know, I write one song. You're talking about no lyrics, right? Yeah, yeah, right. I have nothing. Right, okay. All, right. All I have is contribution. And I didn't write contribution for me. I write, I write contribution to give it away to somebody. And they disrespect me, and I say I go punish them. I ain't giving them it. <laughs> Explainer was part of that too, because he tell me, he say, "Boy, you mad? You can't give it that song." No, that's an excellent song. You know, that's one of my favorite. He turn and he asks me, "Who are going and give it to?" And I tell him, he say, "That person can't sing that song. Don't give it this song." So that kind of encouragement to keep this song. So so far, only have contribution. Okay. Go on down the priority bus route illegally as a trainee. Park on the bus route and cross over the road to go through the wire machine uh, to get into Napuna market. And a drunken Negro man uh, watch a drunken Indian partner and say, Move by, make way for the balise. And I start to think, uh -huh. Make way for the balise. That song like a nice love way. But I'm going up the road now after I done get my things where, uh, where you I went for. And, your lettuce. <laughs> and I'm thinking how to put it over. I started slow, mediocre, and somebody in my head asked me a question. How do you think Kitchener would have sing that way? Grandmaster. And that was it. That was it. Now when I don't do everything, I take about 45 minutes to write this song. Eh? Mm -hmm. Because what I wanted to do, I wanted to to make it exactly what Calypso is supposed to be. A editorial in it's song. All right. That is what I wanted it to do. So I didn't want no fictitious lyrics and no imagination of mine. No, right. So I get in, in the old papers and I pull out Mr. Robinson's speech. I go back in my memory bank and I remember when Pandey say, if you see me and a lion fighting, feel sorry for the lion. Okay. And these are the things I put together. Right. And when I done, I said, Michael, no young boy can score this music for you. And I've gone by Mr. F Sir Frankie Francis. Hmm. Okay. And that was it. That was it. That was it. And hear what? The gods was not against me. A friend of mine named Anne broke up. She said, Mike, two years ago we did play a big king mass named Snake in the Balize. And we have the two balises still. You want them? <laughs> so you see the two towering balises, yes. you see? Yes. That, that was it. That was it. That was it. Okay. Well, girl, I think that year they ran out of balises in Trinidad because every Tom, Dick, and Harry Had brought a me a bag of balises. Go in the bush and cut a stinger, my little partner stinger. <laughs> Bring a whole van of balises for me. <laughs> About 30 something bag. My partner, Jarat Narain, uh -huh. local government, uh -huh. he sent a man with a truck to cut for me. And next man said, but I had enough for the Savannah. Right. Uh -huh. And it was my turn. It was your turn. It was my turn. And it came in in the right timing too. In a yeah, nice timing. Yeah, yeah, jubilation, The people wasn't man. ready for it. Yes. Yes, it was right inside yes, the timing. Yes, yes, it was yes. right in that. But, I know you said it oil. Right, mm -hmm. and they're finished paying. No, they, they and interest. and we know the interest coming. We look forward for the interest because we know it coming. But I have a question because I always wanted to know this: when a a Calypsonian win the the crown, mm -hmm. when he's considered the monarch, mm -hmm. what is his role? Does he have a responsibility as the monarch? Well, he's supposed to have a responsibility. But you me on that. All right, if you are being employed in a firm. Right. According to your status in this firm, mm -hmm. you will have a responsibility. Right. Okay, you in charge of editing 
or you in charge of balancing the books, you are an accountant or something like that. Right. But after they hand you this thing, you are a fine worker. <laughs> <laughs> it have yeah. it have a group they call Tuko. Tuko supposed to be looking out for us and taking care of their own, which is we. Right. But Tuko end up a straight case of conflict of interest. Now let me explain you this, and this is something very serious. All right. And I would like people to understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I will break it down in a colloquial way so that they would comprehend. Right. If you have a matter before the court. And you turn up this morning and your lawyer is the magistrate or the judge. Object. Don't let that man try your case. Mm -hmm. Conflict of interest. Of course. Now, Tuko, who's supposed to be a recognized union body for the Calypsonian, end up, end up our employers. You understand? Let me break it down again for you. <laughs> Dolce, the lawyer, was Ramesh Maraj. Right. Ramesh Maraj turned AG and hung Dolce D. All right. Conflict okay. of interest. Conflict of interest. Okay. Very well put. Very well put. You guys remember Dole, right? You guys remember the incident he's talking about. Go yeah, ahead. because what I'm saying is, if they're supposed to represent you, they can't try your case. Yeah, they can't. They can't, yeah. And that is where Tuko end up to. So the monarch now, still at a hope he get a phone call. And then they have wicked people in Tuko office. Wicked, wicked people in Tuko office who, when a promoter call and asks for your number, they just suddenly lost it. But remember, other people's number. You know, I don't think in the country, you know, but I have a number for um Lord so Fixkin. <laughs> so Lord Fixkin get your work. And joking board. And Lord, and Lord have mercy and joking board and all of them. You understand? So the struggle is still on. But right. not good. Yeah. According right. to my grandmother, knock wood. Right. I have built a repertoire. Yes. And if I decide to stand up and sing ten songs, I know them ten songs, everybody could sing the chorus. Yes. And this is what pulled me out. Yes. In other words, I always don't have to win a monarch to be busy during the year. No. I always have a repertoire. I always is loved by people. I had never taught, and I still have to say thanks be to God, thanks to my fans, right? thanks to my parental guidance in coming up, right? that I learned to make myself likable. Now, not everybody like me, especially the politicians, right? <laughs> but I have a, 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 what you call, a clientele of fans. Right. But I do love up my fans and hate my critics, you know, because my critics makes me more strong. Of course. Of and they course. bring out the creativeness in me. True. You understand? And this is what pull me through. Okay. You'll hear a man win the road match. But you can't put he in concert. No. No. Yeah, a man win so come on up. You can't put he in concert. No. You could put all those in concert. Anytime. And if you want to kill them with diabetes, you go hit Barana play there and say, Go in. Yeah, too sweet, man. And if you want to mash up the place, you go pull in Shadow and Stalin. Yes, and tear it up. And I could stand up among them, and they was there before me, and I could mingle with them because it's love and respect, right, you? Right, you. But I had work and paved that pathway for myself. Nobody didn't do it for me. Right. So, what you call this is like reaping the rewards of hard, of work. Your hard work and labor. Of hard work and labor. Yeah. Again. It only happens from hard work and labor. You can't get that thing without hard work. But Stalin said black man don't get nothing easy, so it's true, you see. And to keep this Caribbean program right out here on American TV, you know what you have to do. And while you do that, let's go to the archives and listen to Michael Asuna. You know him as Shadal. We had an election that wasn't too clean. But the two competitors send up 1880. The nation had great luck for attention in the land. It was up to Robbie to make a decision. Some say he'll give it a bandy, others say it man in. Nobody knows which way. But we all hoping. And while we waiting to exhale, UNC got a surprise. On Christmas Eve at 5.45, the sun refused to rise. Sat Maraj was so disappointed when Robinson said, Sing! Hey, Mr. Pande, make way for the Pande. The country riddled with corruption, murders every day. Hey, Mr. Pande, make way for the 
Caribbean Insights. So, you know, I like to get my information on what's going on, but I am on the set. So, while I am here, I am going to tell you, in order to keep our information alive, Caribbean Insights, you do your thing. Britain knew nothing of peasant farming with its large-scale capitalistic enclosures. The Civil War in America had been fought to preserve the slave cotton plantation and prevent its fragmentation into small holdings for black slaves and poor whites. This is Caribbean Insight, the only place where history is being revealed. The first responsibility that devolves upon you is the protection and promotion of your democracy. We're back here on Caribbean Insight and you guys, we're chatting with one of the best a child of the review, my brother and your friend, Sugar Allos. Allos, over the years, I mean, uh, we know you to be hard-hitting. You know what I mean? You're afraid to hit where it hurts. And you, as, as you tackle any tree, any topic, any subject. But during this time, you have also showcased your spirituality. It has come forward in a lot of the music that you did. How has this influenced your spirituality? How has it influenced your Calypso career? Well, let me, let me first say something. Mm -hmm. It cannot, it did not influence mm -hmm. my Calypso career, but I endorse it in the career right. to establish a known fact among people because People have a lot of derogatory things to say about Calypsonians. Okay. Especially in yesterday time. Right. You know, according to how Sparrow put it, if your sister, friend with a steel band man, the family want to break she hand and things she like out. that. Right? <laughs> um, such also was the plight of the Calypsonian. Right. There was a nobody. But I try to show people that under the venom, the sweet voice and the lyrics, lies a conscious African man. Right. Mm -hmm. Mushy sometimes. I wouldn't tell only when because they were advantage me on that one, but <laughs> I could get mushy. <laughs> but uh -huh. when I was a young man growing up, I went to Nelson Street Boys Irish School and they taught me a song there. And it says, if I can help somebody as I go along, then my living, then my living would not, not be, in, be vain. in vain. You know, even if I have a part say, if I can spread God's message, mm -hmm. right? That make me wake up in a way because who am I? Mm -hmm. Who am I? The fact is that 
what is my purpose being here? These are the questions we'll ask ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yet still, the little West Indian reader book when I was small says, um, I passed this way but once. Uh -huh. Any good I can do to my country or for my fellow man, may I do it now, for I may not pass this way again. Very good. These are things I keep in my head, right? But how do you find yourself? You first have to find your culture. When you find your culture, which is your roots, mm -hmm. you're going to find your religious aspect. Okay. When you find your religious aspect, you're going to find God. And when you find your God, you will find out why you're here, what is your purpose on earth. Then your living wouldn't be in vain. Right. So don't help other people so them living wouldn't be in vain and you are only good. Right. Charity begins at home. The Bible tells us, take the beam out your eye before you take, it before you take the moat out your brother's eye. Right. If you can't see how I could, if you, how you go cross me the road? You right. understand? Yeah. So this is the whole aspect about it. So I try to establish to the people that I know God. Mm -hmm. I am a child of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. I go be one in the 144 score. Okay. Because I find myself. Good. You understand? Uh -huh. I'm not desecrating anybody else's religion, but I'm just saying I find mine. And my own is Yoruba. Okay. From the Yoruba tribe, we deal with a thing they call Orisha. Mm -hmm. These guys. Mm -hmm. I don't care what people say. They say a lot of derogatory things. They say lie. They don't ever do research, but they say we just drink blood. We just do this. They just call it Shango. Shango is the name of our Orisha deity. No man can be Shango. But but people, we, because we all people, tend to say a lot of things about or make remarks about things when we don't know anything about Well, this it. is the first thing you just have to understand, you know, and you have to bypass yeah. it because somebody yeah. who don't know you yes. will profess they know you so good and you went to school with them and you was this and you was that. Yeah, yeah. And that person don't know you at all. I know. <laughs> but that is just what you call a false claim right. to a non-profitable fame because yeah. the one difference say he knows Shagalos or she know V. That's all they want to hear, you know? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and it doesn't profit them anything. And they don't care how they mash you down in the mud. No. By getting just that little piece of false glory. You understand? Mm -hmm. But then, if you ask them the question, who am I? They, they don't know. Say. They can't say. <laughs> it's only happening here on one place. Caribbean Insight and we're chatting with Mr. Michael Asuna. So let's go to the videotape while you continue to look, listen and learn. Unity, my PM asks for unity. It's a lovely request, but who the hell he trying to fool? When members of the UNC I shouldn't train Baconians blatantly That their mission in life is simply divide and rule Cause when I look around train Bago I just can't see How many people could live in unity when there's segregation Cause biracialism So long as we still have people who push in hate the little money they have make them feel the great and they feel Africans are inferior. You can have unity, you'll have civil war. Cause if a Hindu priest could say bluntly, time that Hindus have their own bank. It means that Africans don't have money. Them alone could pull all the rank. The little daughter could date a Chinese. A Syrian or a white man But if she ever date an African He will never have grandchildren He say that the PNM government had a plan To dogularize the land So they build the schools in a way To force Indian children to sit next to ones I have to see Satma Raj in a dashi key for I to believe that they serious about unity. The 
Indians and Africans living in this land under same circumstance was oppressed by the white man but they volunteer while we were captured, sold and brought here we were considered as slaves but history say they were in danger yet through it all we still stick together in sun and rain on the plantation where we caught the cane it didn't have no party was love and harmony but politicians have we brains all inflated they keep fanning the flames of hatred long before it had a UNC you and I was living in unity but now they talking about ethnic cleansing they say we must stick to we own kind but the old people they have a saying that time is longer than twine African supports Indians religiously anything they have we write there for when they celebrate Eid and Diwali we build Jose and you know I'm trying to figure out how I reach here I am in my bed doing my normal thing of looking at Caribbean Insights. My name is David Rudder. I am Mavis John. Yo, this is KMC. I'm Nicole Graves. Hey, this is Ronnie. This is Ronnie McIntosh. Hi, it's Brother Resistance. I am Ras Shorty Eye. I make sure that I watch Caribbean Insight. And so should you. Caribbean Insight. Ready is dynamite. Caribbean Insight. Really super. Caribbean inside, enjoy day or night. Caribbean inside, really is dynamite. We're back here in Caribbean Insight, um, and we're continuing to chat with one of the greats, Mr. Michael Asuna, my friend and your brother, Sugar Aloes. We know him as the bitter, sweet man of Calypso, and as we follow his repertoire, you can see why, Shugs. As a child of the review, the Grandmaster, the Lord Kitchener, what does it feel like now that he's gone? Because I had an opportunity to look at the tent. Uh -huh. What's going on with the posse, with the home, with the children, now that the Master is gone? Well, actually, we're still close-knitted except for a few loose screws. <laughs> well, you hear your name crazy, so we had to call it a loose screw. <laughs> but the rest of us, we bind together. Mm -hmm. If no other time, but especially around carnival time and things like that, we look out for each other and things like that. And uh, we're trying to keep this legacy. And I promise myself that in the near future, the very near future, because as I end up having to put a little more input into the establishment that the day Jazzy Kalai Panten say he can't make, I'm gonna take it up. Right. We have to keep it going. Good, good. I mean, the, the man would love that. Well, I don't know if he gonna love it because we never talk to no dead person to tell me if they did like the cough man, they like whether we put them down and all kind of things. So I hope he like it. Well, he had to like it. I mean, I mean, he worked hard for it as a tent. He put his years into, he nurtured. A lot of Calypsonians came under his guidance. Mm -hmm. You as one, Crow Crow, brother Crow Crow, well, and a whole lot of others. Well, the whole thing about it is, you know the funny part about it is, I, I, he was never my favorite in my little boy days, you know. Uh, I used to go with the flow boy, buddy. The <laughs> Sparrow. Sparrow. Right. Now I would appreciate kitchen and music. Right. But love for love, buddy boy. But what happened? How you end up in the review? Girl, that was a mistake, yes? That was a whole big mistake. <laughs> Buddy had a tent down in the hideaway there and things didn't work out and he didn't give up. Uh -huh. And I, again, I said, done with Calypso, done. I want no part of Calypso. I started fixing myself. Why I didn't stay home? Was doing, I don't know why I didn't stay in school and get to diploma with this stupid Calypso thing and blah, blah, blah. But when you were cut out, it cut out. When God appoint, man does disappoint. That's the reason. And, uh, Jazzy Panton come quite in my meet shop. Call me. Say, hello, I come for you. I say, come for me. I don't know what I done with that. He say, what happened? You ain't have song. I go buy two songs. I say, I have song. 
He said, well, what happened? I said, nah. Too many mishaps, too many cut and stop and go back and I ain't able with that. I really ain't able with that. He tell me to, he tried to convince me, he took contract. I said, why are you waiting for Sparrow to come back? If Sparrow come back with the tent, I go in with Sparrow and not leave him because I believe in making roots, putting mm -hmm. on a foundation. I believe in running here and there. Right. I don't like it. Right. It's, yeah, it's like a rolling stone. You gather nothing. You gather nothing. You know. Right, right. So the whole thing about it is he come and he tell me, he say, well, look, Sparrow ain't coming back. I said, Sparrow not coming back? He said, yes. He's not coming back. I said, I go sign this contract under one condition. He said, what? I said, if Sparrow come back in the morning, I'll leave in your tent and go back by Sparrow. He knows Sparrow wasn't coming back. So he said, yes, he agreed to it. Signed to it too. Uh -huh. And I end up in the tent. I start to behave like I was there for years. Remember better. Anything wrong, I make them put it right. Okay. Till it reached that point, I just a Calypsonian act on the stage. But I end up with work like PRO and go grievance officer because everybody have a problem coming to me. And I go into management and say, hey, this is wrong, this can't be right. X, Y, and Z is the case. And that is where I got my respect from both Kitchener and Jazzy Panther. Mm -hmm. And it grew, it just keep growing. Even to now. But you're talking about the people in the tent, everybody have a problem, they used to come to you. In a lot of your calypsos, you know, listening to the lyrics, it's not only the people in the tent, the people in the nation. Yeah. And they have a problem until oh one God, remember the year when you come up yes. here. You I say, don't want to hear. Don't, want to hear don't tell me. Don't because it's all you get the government, all these office, all you went and put them back there. Don't tell me. But people come and talk to you. Yeah. Because yeah. They, know, they, they know your capabilities, they know your personalities. You see, you they see, know your, your you love see, to report. This, this is the role of the Calypsonian. He's a mirror to society. Right. He right. is the mirror. Right. He has to reflect the ilks, the hurt, the right. complaints, the disgust, the fed up of the society. That is the Calypsonian role. I was reading in an interview recently where um, you were talking something about your boy Crazy mm. from the reveal. Mm -hmm. And he said, this song, this song for this year was something about Take Down the Yeah, party. yeah. Rosie Panty. Rosie Panty. Yeah. And you made some um, statements within there, you know, if you get to Take Down the Panty, you, sh you hope you're coming back. I hope you're not coming what back. Happened? What was that about? Let me explain you this. I want to put it in a little jovial manner, but sure. at the same time, I want to explain you know, the whole core about it. Yeah. We come and we do a little show they call Magnificent Seven. After the Magnificent Seven, I a Western, he hit uh -huh. me for a few dollars more, he leave me. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is simply this. You are looking at an at a, at a, at a, at a enterprise, right? which is spectacular, mm -hmm. where the people are strictly business. You sure? Strictly, strictly business. Mm -hmm. Review has a sympathetic approach to certain things and certain people. If you've been consistent for six years in the review, eight years in the review, the year you come weak, they would still accommodate you. Right. Not with spectacular. And let me give you the history of that too if you feel you ain't know what I'm saying. If I feel you ain't know what I'm saying, I'm going to remind you something. Come, come. When Lord Nelson had Lala, Mm -hmm, I remember. And my lover and them thing. He was big in Trinidad. He couldn't go nowhere else and sing but the review. What happened after he get weak? He didn't have to Johnny King. They didn't take Johnny King. With Natia's plan, after he sing Natia's plan, bring him in the, the spectacular. Mm -hmm. And after that, didn't get rid of him. Yeah. Went to Duke. Mm -hmm. So this is just what I'm showing you. So I hope next year he get a pull down Rosie Panty because if he can't get a Rosie Panty next year, they go push him out. <laughs> And he cannot come back. Somebody had to put on the foot. Right. They can't be doing it because these Calypsonians, as they have a good song and a big hit, somebody offer them a dollar more, they're gone. Right, right, right. If, uh, if, if I feed you when you didn't have no money, when you have money, give me something now. Right, right. You understand? So if you have a big song now and it's to make a dollar, let me and you make the dollar. Yeah. Don't go somewhere else for somebody else to make the dollar. Right. It's, it's the law of living, man. That's the way we live. Yeah, but that's the, that the concrete jungle attitude. Yeah, when they move around like yes. this. They're like you're hustling it. Yeah, you're, you're, you're. Well, I'm, you understand. According to Kitchener, Kitchener said some words one time and I really respect it. He said, he say, I just sing Calypso, not for money. But I feel Calypso is part of me and I owe it to the people. Yeah. And uh, uh, from what you're saying about the review and the organization of the review, 
it seems like it's still within these terms. It's only happening in one place, right here at Caribbean Insight. And guys, if you didn't do it as yet, I hope you pick up the phone, call your friends, call your neighbors, let them know that Sugar Allos, my boy Michael Asuda, is on Caribbean Insight. And let's go straight to the videotape and listen to some more. Great one, tribute to the Lord Kitchener by Michael Asuda. I'd like to refresh your memory about a real shocking tragedy that had occurred during the year that had just gone by. Now some of you may say you don't care, while to others it may bring a tear. But please just try, he already died, I beg you, don't cry. I'm speaking of the Grand Master, who had left us so suddenly. When the hands of death fell upon him And shook this entire country It was a death I'll never forget And most of us can't believe it yet Now join with me And let's pay tribute to the great Kichi Grandmaster, why you leave us so And gone in tears and sorrow To mourn the loss of your life Grandmaster, I'll never forget the day and the way you passed away, leaving us in strife. In the midst of so much strain, we had to endure the grief and pain, knowing that never in life again could one be so dear and true. Grandmaster, don't in tears and blue I'll make sure that we keep blue. sweet memories of you De ding de ding lie lie Ding de ding ding lie da 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 Was so devoted to his country He was innocent But with confidence He uses talent And without fuss, fury or anger Each little topic he did master The discipline he displayed within Was so tolerant He took this calypso art form To many different foreign lands Political and social commentaries But most of his works was for pan Through him we found a place in this world His brilliant ideas were always sold Oh Kichiyo, why you left us suddenly just so? Grandmaster, you hurt every one down here Each one shed a tear so clear On that Friday morn Grandmaster, if we could have find a clue To put life again in you and make you reborn But you should have considered 72 long years you had labor God felt it was time to retire and live privately at least Grandmaster, all sorrows will you know, never I'm trying to figure out how I reach here. I am in my bed doing my normal thing of looking at Caribbean insights. I'm the Lord Kitchen. This is Ruth Smart. This is Sunel Dempster. My name is Winston Bailey, better known as Shadow. This is Calypsonian Squeezy. I watch no other but Caribbean Insight. Caribbean Insight. Ready is dynamite. Caribbean Insight. Really super. Was spite. Caribbean Insight. Enjoy day or night, Caribbean insight, really is dynamite. According to the interview, you want to give it up. It seems like what happened, you ain't coming again, we going, we, what, what going on? No, it's not, not a matter of giving it up, Evie. What happened is this. If you put yourself as a stumbling block, you're hampering people. In other words, you have people who have a problem and the serious problem is a question. The question is how much is enough? 
Uh -huh. The drug lords have that problem. <laughs> Everybody have that problem. They don't know how much is enough. The politician. <laughs> yes. But I am saying that after they hand me the thing in 2002, I really didn't want it to go back. My wife encouraged me. She said no. But why? Why? I want Katie when I crown bad. Then my boy, I like him too bad. Yeah, if I, like I dead him. in the I like morning, him. I know I'm like still alive. I like He's vicious just like me. Yeah, I like it. You understand? Yeah. So I want to make room for fellas like himself and Devon Seals. Another, Another Devon. hard-hitting fella. Yeah. You know, so I said I really wasn't going back. But the wife said, well, go, you know, just make it two and call that a day. That is what she said. Add two. Now, what she said makes sense because one was interest and one is the pay me. <laughs> but but I'll go back for the next one and then I wouldn't compete but I wouldn't stop right and I wouldn't stop saying but personally I feel I mean I understand what you say men like Skatey Devon and them great young artists we have coming up in the art form you want to leave room for them but I figure you have a role because these brothers still look up to you. They yeah, still want to, they respect my life. And if you're yeah. not there, if you're not there personally, from me and from many of the fans out there, we missing I'm something. I'm going to be there, but when, so. Well, so what you're saying now, I had to make myself a pinnacle so that the young fellas saying, that is where we had to climb, we had to yes. beat it. Not beat you, but strive. To be like him. Right. All not, right. Not the all word right. beat. I all don't right. use the word beat because I figure it brings in a lot of negative co connotation. I mean, strive to be like. Okay, okay. You know? But I could do a study side and do the same thing for But them. they want to see you out there. We want to see you walk that big You know, stage. you know. We want to see you back. I'm like my backyard now, Well, man. we want that. We, we the people love that. Would you believe, would you believe me, uh -huh. uh -huh. that in the middle of a competition, uh -huh. Any Dimash for competition, as long as Katie and Devon there, I just try not to be close in number, in appearance. So as I don't sing, if I sing before them, I run and change my clothes, come back out and stand up at the edge of the stage day to support them, to woo them on and things like that. Yeah, because you want them to be, you yes. want them to come in. Pull Katie aside, I say, watch your notes, it's a little too sharp, do thing, thing, cool down the little. And I must say, a little bit, put it over, you know. Yeah. And let him go out there. You set him up. Yeah, because yes. I like them fellas, man. I like them. Yes, man. And and and, and that support, I think they really do. Yeah, they appreciate it. Man. They appreciate. They are, a lot of the young artists. Don't care what skate he have. Yes. In the line of a song, uh -huh. he must pull me aside. Hear this. Listen. What you think? Yeah. Say so change that word. That word ain't good. Don't use that word. Uh -huh. You know. Now you could say the same thing you want to say, but interfere with that thing they call vocabulary. Okay. Make it a little bigger. You know in the student companions, big words, small words? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Something like that. Well it um that is one of one of the things that I admire about you over the years, all the many songs you write, lyrics, 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 as you yeah. say, vocabulary. Yeah. And um, it's something we try to pass on because to be, Kitchener came to the studio and these were his words he said. To be a great Calypso and to be a great writer, you have to know words, you have to be able to put it together. Yeah. You have to be able to get it. So you young ones out there, don't just come from a melody or take up a drum machine and bring it. No. Oh, you talking about the electrical Calypso? Yeah, yeah there be uh -huh. electrical Calypso. Fast food. Outlet. Uh, <laughs> you know, bun sugar and, and, and brown the meat and let's say my dung and thing is chicken and chips, but yeah, you know what? <laughs> fast food, fast food outlet, it wouldn't work. Nah. It would not work. And then the song and them won because they rented it. Eh? It's rent a song on a drum machine and come. That's and, and I often and I often feel you, you write a song, you, you know, putting it over is something else. But when you write a song, when you write a song and you put it over, it's well done. And you have showed them that mm -hmm. over the years. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, you have been listening for the past 60 minutes to Sugar Arrows, the sweet man of Calypso, a child of the review, a brother who make you cry and make you laugh. And you only get it where? Right here at Caribbean Insight. And in my hand, I just have three. Just a few. Listen, guys, it's 15 years the man has been to the big stage. You can collect all Sugar Arrow CD. But in my hand, I have the Soka Ballad, the Victory CD, and 
consistent. A word that fits him. You know he has been there over the years. So guys, you do your part. Go out there and support our culture. Pick up a copy. Go to your record stores. Ask the distributors for the CD. And if they don't have it, ask them to get it. That's the way that we keep our Caribbean culture and history alive. Sugar, I want to thank you for coming by and seeing me. Yes. And I know I'm going to see you again pleasure. because they were your interest. Yeah, yeah. I get the interest already. They're smart. They pay me the interest. All their women always the capital. They, they were the capital. <laughs> so you know we're going to see you again. Yes, baby. And you know the doors always open on Caribbean Insight whenever you're in town. Yeah, it's a pleasure, man. The pleasure is all mine. And I must say I appreciate all, the, all that you all have been doing yeah, man. for the art form and things like that because through the same Caribbean Insight, a lot of American kids yes, would meet man. me in the road. Yes. Say, die sugar alone. Want to yes. shake my hand and things like that. They'll yes. tell the mother, mommy, mommy, want to meet him. Yeah. And I know it's true, Caribbean inside. And because that child would say, I see you on TV. <laughs> you know, and so. it's only one place, Caribbean inside. <laughs> yeah, so, so you guys, remember I tell you guys, it's the movement. It's a Caribbean exodus. It's the movement of our people, our history, and our culture on American television. So don't just sit by and lose it. Remember I tell you guys, there's only five weeks we have and the curtain's gonna come down. So do your part, make your contribution. And on that note, to you, my friends and my critics, I'll see you next week, same time, same place. God bless you all. Yes, I got on the map, they call paradise. Where the poor inhabitants are being forced daily to make sacrifice As a people, they are passive and God-fearing They don't bear no grudge, no matter what they are on the going The struggles of life they will face daily, but they always have time to smile The children can be no longer free, cause them kidnappers running wild Crazy politicians with false promises, that is the order of the day. And within all the confusion, with their gods there's no separation. Day by day, they still find the time to pray. You hear what I say? Each day, if it is danger, they pray. Weak with hunger, they pray. Kidnap or murder, they pray. Financial pressure. These people really have a way To handle the situation each day Fighting to turn nail through blood, sweat and tears But the ammunition is pressed As it strictly pressed for years Sweat and tears, for the ammunition is spread.